In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use some shaders and techniques uh, from getting things exported outside of ZBrush and pull them into Photoshop to build something that looks more like an illustration style. So you can see here the end results of uh, that process and me baking out some different um, shading passes or render passes inside of ZBrush and pulling those into Photoshop. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how we can do this. So I'm going to zoom this back a little bit and uh, go ahead and load up ZBrush. So the first thing um, I'm going to want to show is a series of shaders that uh, I was able to find um, that give a really cool comic book render look. And uh, this is actually sitting here at this location. Uh, let me pull this over so it's uh, easier for you to read. Uh, but this is the this is the web address for where this um, material pack actually sits. So if you visit this link, uh, you might just want to pause the video and write this down and uh, type that in and take a look for it. And once you get that pulled up, you can go to this web page here. Um, and I'm actually going to translate that. I guess it's uh, written in French. And I was kind of surprised to go to the website and actually see that uh, the person who made the materials actually used my uh, one of my models for the examples for this, which I thought was really cool. So um, thanks for doing that. Um, never even knew that this existed until I found uh, the shader pack. But basically the uh, different shaders on here, there's different ones for different line thickness and uh, outlines, ink shade ink shade black, uh, there's a rough shade, ink line and shade. Uh, so you can see there's a bunch of different versions for that. Once you have that loaded, um, I was actually putting that into a place where I can get to this stuff from Lightbox. So I've got a setup where I like to go um, and set all the um, things that I might pull into ZBrush right outside of whatever the version of ZBrush is that I'm using. You can see it's on C program files, x86 for 64-bit machine, and then Pixelogic. And then within there is going to be all your different versions. But I like to make folders with inside of that. That's maybe alphas, brushes, hotkeys, materials, and projects, and stuff like that. That way, um, no matter what version of ZBrush I'm using, I can always refer to this file structure and not have to worry about any of that getting overwritten or have to worry about copying files over and stuff like that. So I'm going to double click on the uh, materials and actually after you download this it'll unzip into a pack that's going to have all the different uh, shaders for you. So you can just go ahead and double click on one of those and you can see what that shader is going to look like on your model. Now from here it's just a matter of rendering out some different passes on this. So for this, I actually wanted to turn off all shadows, so I went to Render, and let me go ahead and dock that over there real quick. And if I go um, and go open up the Render Properties, I'm going to turn off Occlusion and Shadows. So basically, when I hit uh, Shift-R, or hit the Best Possible Render button, you can see after it renders, it should be nice and flat and just black and white. I do think I have um, some BPR filters. I might have uh, the blur turned on. So let me just make sure that that's actually not engaged. So I'm going to turn that off. And let me go ahead and re-render. I might just move it just slightly, just to make sure I'm rendering correctly with this. So I'm basically making sure that all filters are turning turned off on the BPR filter. Um, I'm going to actually use ZapLink, which is a uh, part of ZBrush that will send your screen over to uh, to Photoshop and you're actually going to 
be using this for creating textures, but I'm just going to kind of steal some of the functionality of this so I can move files back and forth between uh, ZBrush and Photoshop. So I'm going to say document and go to zap link. And since this doesn't have any textures on there, I'll just have to say enable polygon colorize. And uh, I want to turn on perspective. And I'm going to have to hit cancel because I don't think I have perspective turned on. So let's go ahead and I'll just re-render it real quick. It doesn't take very long to render this. So I'll hit shift R to render that again. Now I'll go to document zap link. And if this is the first time, you'll have to say set target app. And that's going to ask you to find the application for Photoshop. So you click this and it's going to take you through a series of basically find the executable for Photoshop. Um, if you still have your uh, image popping up in some other image editing software, then you need to find a Photoshop document on your computer and then right click and go to properties and make sure that it's set to open with Photoshop when you double click on a uh, PSD document. And that should get you to the point where um, you're basically going to get an image like this sent over to uh, Photoshop. So I can just close this right off the bat and go right back to ZBrush um, because another thing that I think is uh, maybe important is that you change the background color. Right now it's that, that grayish color and we need to get that to be white. So I can go to document and say back and pick white from here and now I'm going to have a white background. So I'm going to re-render again. Um, like I said, the uh, render times are very low, so not a big deal. Now I'll go to document and say zap link and say drop now, and it'll send this over to Photoshop. So the way zap link works is going to have like a background. It's going to have a shape for color that you would actually be able to color on here, which you can just steal the masking information from that if you if you want to. Um, what I could do right now, it, it, it saves this file with a specific naming convention so it moves things back and forth between uh, Photoshop and ZBrush. So right off the bat I'll just name this something uh, so it doesn't overwrite that. And I can just say save as, and maybe put that on the desktop or something. Um, ZBrush, comic book, render, save. Okay. So now I'm set for that, and um, now I have a base to start working with. Um, one thing I'd like to do is maybe just save this selection because I've got a nice mask. So I can hold down Control and click here or here and build a selection here, and I can just go to Channel, and I can actually just click the New button here. And there's also a Z depth uh, pass, which is pretty cool, but I don't think we'll be using that. Um, so I'm just going to go back here to layers, and I'm going to select all my layers and hit Control E and just merge everything down. And I'll just call this line pass one. And now if I put this on multiply, you're not going to see any kind of difference, but if I make a new layer, inside of here and just call this color. I could fill this with some sort of color. And because I've made this layer a multiply, then that line work is going to sit directly over the top of the color. So let me throw this away real quick. I really like to use the solid colors inside of Photoshop, so if you click this little icon here, it's going to give you a bunch of different uh, things you can do with uh, brightness, contrast, levels, curves, um, hue saturation. So I'm going to click on solid color and that's going to give me whatever color I pick here and the color picker will fill that solid color with that. And there's our, a, a mask that's associated with this so if I click and drag this down to the bottom you can see what we've got here. The cool thing about solid colors is at any point I can double click on this and go back and I can change colors on here. So it's really cool for making color combinations. Uh, let's say this is going to be my background. So I can just call this maybe BKG or something. 
Now if I go to my channels, I can hold down control and select the alpha within inside of here in the channels where I've saved that off. Now if I make a solid color, a new one, on the top of that, I can select a color. And because I had that selection uh, already loaded before I went to solid color, it's going to build that selection into a mask for me. So here's how these solid colors work. You saw how you can double click on this and you can change the um, the color at any point on that which is a really cool feature but then you also have this mask so that you can actually add or subtract um, into that layer so if I put on this brush here which is a hard edge brush if I paint with black or white which you can see it's black is going to uh, basically mask things and if I paint with white it's going to reveal them so I'm revealing the color from this color fill layer or that solid color by painting white into this but it works with all different types of brushes see I've got a nice soft like airbrush here so you can actually paint into these masks and you can paint with these solid colors and the cool thing about this is if you ever have an art director that comes by or you have a client or whatever you can at any point go back and easily change your colors on here and I know these are pretty hideous color combinations but this is just to give you the point of um, how you can easily and quickly manipulate some of these things okay so if I want to start cutting into this then I can just put it back on a hard edge brush and instead of painting into it if I tap X to go and paint with a black brush it's more like I'm erasing at that point and if I have a Wacom pen if I ex actually use the eraser tool it should give me the opposite so if I'm painting with white on here if I do my eraser it's gonna do black which is gonna be more like erasing that color out so let me get rid of this real quick okay so another thing I like to do is start to group these um, layers together and I'll call this um, base fill And I'll take my line work and actually make a, a layer, um, a group for that, a layer group. So I'll go ahead and take this um, layer and just drag it up into the group. Now at any point I can just hide the entire group. And I can call this group, I can call it ink. And I can take this blending mode that I have from my layer and I can put it back to normal, which is just going to make it black and white. And I can actually take the group and I can take that and make the group multiply. So now anything I put in this group will be set to multiply. So if I do more render passes inside of ZBrush and kick it over to Photoshop, then that entire group will act as a multiply layer. So let me just save this real quick and we'll go back to ZBrush. So now I'll hit my comma key and then open up the uh, area where I've got those shaders again and I will select a new shader for it and hit shift R and render a new pass now one thing that I want to call out real quick if I want to be really careful not to mess up this camera view um, we can steal some more functionality from Zaplink so if you go to document and then open up Zaplink properties you can actually store camera views but uh, you're going to have to be really careful uh, about this because if you store a front, it'll actually store a back along with it and a left or a right. It'll st store multiple views for that. So we want to use custom one or custom two, so it's just going to be like a custom camera. And now when I do that, that view is stored. And I can go to document and say zap link. And we'll just go ahead and send that over. So you can see what we've got here. 
here's this new view that we've got well it's the same view but a new shot and we've rendered it out with a different line weight pass and I can just select that layer and hit control E to merge that down and if I hold down V to put on move I can move that in here but if I hold down shift while I do that it should snap it right into the uh, right spot for me so now we've got a layer sitting on top of this one but in here we're gonna have to take this and make this multiply if we want to get the effect of both of those going and I'll just call this line pass 02 now we can play with the opacity of this and drop it back kind of mess around with it um, another thing that we could do let's go 100% here we could actually um, put a levels adjustment on it so I'm gonna make a levels adjustment and I only want it to affect this layer here so if I want some layer effect to only um, play with this one layer I can hold down alt and click you can see if I have alt right between the layers here it changes your icon to this little um, black and white thing with a little triangle just go ahead and hold down alt and then click right here and you can see how it's shifted that over that means that this levels adjustment is only working with just this layer now now with levels I can tweak out the the darks the mids so I can make them darker or lighter and the highlights on it so I really want to kind of blow this out and we can lessen the overall effect here of what it's doing the darkness level or we can affect the overall lightness level with these two sliders here okay so I can just turn that on and off and kinda see what's going on there with that and I could dial the uh, the opacity of that layer so I can see that another thing that I want to show you is the fact that you can use layer mask on side of uh, a layer group here so on this group I can click this little mask button here and now I can actually paint in or out parts of that um, that group with this mask here so if I'm on white that's gonna be showing everything if I go and make sure that this is clicked see how it's really subtle but when you're on the mask it'll have a white little highlight line around it and it'll let you know that you're on the mask at that point if I want to erase some of this stuff out this line work I can paint with black into that mask so I could paint some of this line work out I'll just put it on like an airbrush and make my brush larger and I can kind of fade some of that out so now any layers that I add into that group will um, be faded out now if I do the same thing for color if I go ahead and select these two here I'm gonna select this one and hold down shift to select both of them and hit control G to group and I can call this color and now I can build a mask for that and I like to put it on the gradient tool so I hit G and I like to make sure that it's on this gradient which is going to fill from my foreground color to transparent and then we've got an opacity slider so we can put that down a little bit lower or we can leave it 100% 100% is going to be rather strong this is going to be a linear gradient that goes from here to here like that or we can do a radial gradient that's going to emit from a point and radiate out so I actually need to um, paint this on this layer here this color fill so here's another cool thing you can have uh, nested groups inside of groups so I'll group this color and make sure that that is that in fact in that group there I'll call it base fill 
again just keep the same naming convention and then I'll make a mask for that so on here if I put it on the gradient tool and make sure I'm on the mask if I drag out now you can see how I'm just going to kind of erase out some of that color for the neck and I'll put on the radi the radio gradient tool and because my opacity is down lower I could you know really take some time and finesse this and build this up or if I have it at 100% then it's going to be really strong right off the bat so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with how I use how I use that so I can put that back down a little bit lower and switch so I want to reveal some more color here so I'm building back up some of the color I had in the chin area If I hit X, I can switch be between adding and subtracting. Let's go ahead and hit save. Now I'll jump back to um, Photoshop. Or, uh, I'm sorry. I'll jump back to ZBrush and I'll load up a different shader type. Maybe I'll get something that's a nice thick outline. This one was really cool. I, I really like this one here. So this gives uh, some really interesting internal high contrast shading. So I'm going to go ahead and render that out, hitting Shift R, and then go to Document, and then click on Zap Link again. Okay, and now I can just go ahead and hit Control E to merge that top layer down. And I'll go back and make sure that I'm on my ink layers here. And I'll just put that on my Move tool, hold down Shift and drag it over, and it should snap into place for me. So I'll call this Core shadow and maybe call that ink and set that to multiply so you can see what we've added there all right I'm gonna do another pass but I'm gonna put a different shader on ZBrush and I'm basically going to put this matte cap gray. So I clicked here, put matte cap gray on, and I'm going to capture some of the shading information from this and say document and zap link. So now I'm going to be able to steal the shading aspect of this. and I accidentally put that in the ink so I'm just going to click and drag that out until it's out of that ink so I want to turn this more into some sort of comic bookish kind of look um, so I'm gonna go use it's not a filter it's under image adjustment and posterize in which if I bring this over you can kind of see what's happening if I put it on the lowest levels too it's gonna have a color of two which this thing's black and white so it's gonna force it to either be black or white and if we move this up to three let me just type that number in you can see it's going to add three shades at that point if I do four then it's going to uh, do four shades for me so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on 4. And now I'm going to have my line, my ink work, sitting over the top of this. And I can actually set this to multiply. We could try the multiply. 
And we could actually even step through some of the different uh, shading that they have. You might be able to use uh, soft light. So I kind of like the look of this, but uh, I'm going to want to match uh, the mask that I have on here. So after you have one mask made, it's really easy to steal the information from that. So I can hold down uh, control and click on that mask and I can get the selection for that. And now that I'm on this right here, I can go ahead and hit the mask button and it's going to just automatically basically give me the same mask that I had down here, but on this uh, this layer here. So um, I've just stolen you know some of the information from here and pushed it back up on here. There's also um, another filter that we could take a look at if you go to filter and we go to noise and do median. Let me click and drag this over here a little bit so we can see what's going on. You can play with the slider on this to where it's going to kind of even out some of the roughness on uh, some of the shapes that it's made. So you might want the detail in there or, or you might want uh, a more simplified kind of look and this can help get you there. So after you run that you could turn on the ink layer again and see how that's interacting uh, with that with that layer. Now um, what if we wanted to change the colors on here? Uh, I'm going to show you real quick we hold on shift and click on the mask we can temporarily turn on or turn off uh, parts of uh, the mask uh, pretty easily. So if I take that back off a of soft light and put the blending mode on to normal I'm gonna have something that I can start working with as far as building selections. Uh, if I put it on my magic wand tool right over here uh, we can say sample just this layer and I could really easily select this shape that I've got right here. And then I can make a new solid color at that point and I could just get that shape to where it's real easy for me to work with there and I could go back to this layer here, select the black and uh, just make another solid color layer like so come here, select the gray, and make another solid color layer, and I could go back and select all the white, and make a new solid color layer. So I just use the eyedropper to select this to get that exact color, and I can just kind of raise it up a little bit to make that a little bit lighter. So I've just uh, used that shading that we kicked out from ZBrush to, you know, build some lines like what we've got here. And now it's actually possible. I could just basically throw that whole thing away if I don't really need that shading anymore. Um, so this could be color for background. And I think I... Um, took something um, like another solid color here and then I just took a line I did a marquee so I can put that right here on the square marquee and then run this across here hold down shift to add to the selection so I've got this here, and I'll go to my mask and then fill that with black. So then at that point I can just turn that stripe on and off, and if I want to uh, get a different color. Here's another thing that's kind of cool about this solid color, that if you want this filled 100%, but you're trying to get some color that's a blend between this color here and maybe the background, you can drop down the opacity to where this is the color I want. Now I can put it on my color picker and I can select this color right here and it's going to store it right here for me. So when I put this back on 100%, obviously that color is going to go away, but I can double click here and pull up my color picker and I can actually just select from right here where we're at. So I just kind of stole that color that we stored up.
in that spot. So I can group all these, hitting Control G, and I'll say color, and then call it face. And we already got that mask built up here, so I can hold down Control and click on it. And I can apply it to this group just by having the selection loaded and clicking the mask button. So we've got this here. So now we've got these different colors going on, and we've got uh, some different line work that you can kind of play with. And if that's too strong for you, you could turn that on and off. And I actually took this uh, this shading here, and I actually turned that into something that I could fill with a color. So I'll show you how we could do that really quick. I'll just make a really a temporary temporary layer just by hitting New Layer, filling it with white. And I'll just turn this into normal real quick. Hold on shift to click to temporarily turn off that mask. So now I've got a black and white image. So I can hit Control A. And then I'll hold down Control, Alt, Shift, and then E to make a copy merged. And it should paste it at the top of the layer here. So that's going to give me an image that I can turn into a solid color. And I need to select this whole thing and hit Control C to copy it. And I'm going to put it into the channels over here. So I'll make a new channel. I'll select it and I'll hit Control V to paste it in there. So I basically changed the image into a flat image and select that all and put it into a channel so now I can get to this point where I can hit control I on here and inverse that and that's going to give me a black and white image and this is going to give me white where I want to make a selection out of. So I'll hold down control and click on this alpha then I'll click back on RGB here go back to layers and then say solid color and I can pick a color you can see I've filled with that uh, color now. I'll go ahead and hit OK. I'll hide this real quick. I don't need this layer anymore. And I'll just hide the ink. I'll turn this back on. And I'll put this into the color of the face. And I can tweak the colors on it play around with that a little bit and you can see since I drop that in here with this group and it's got that mask on there it's going to automatically fade uh, the bottom of the neck area for me so I can turn the ink back on and remember we took that off the multiply layer so I can put that back on multiply so it's going to multiply over the top of there but my mask is hidden it's got that big X through it so I can hold on shift and click on that to um, bring back my mask now I'm probably going to want to hide that core shade, uh, shadow ink layer that I had on there. And I've got a white blocking image that I used, and so let's get rid of that. So here we go. Now we've got our line work back for us. And I'm not liking where this uh, bar is sitting on his head. So I'm going to select that mask and just go right about here and I will fill that with black and I might actually um, let's undo that real quick let's see something real quick I want to um, fill that black with the shape of his head so I went to that uh, mask that we had earlier and I'll go here onto this mask and then fill that shape with black. And I'm still not liking it, so I'm going to add, um, subtract some more from, from that. Right about here. So another thing that I was doing, uh, I've got a nice white outline around this whole thing. So if you wanted to um, 
do something like that. Let's go ahead and get this shape that we've got here. I'm going to hold down control and click on that layer. So now we have that shape. And um, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. And I've got my black color here as my background. So I'm going to hold down control and hit backspace and that's going to fill with this background color. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, layer styles. So if I double click on the layer like right in here in this area, it's going to open up this whole dialog box. For different things you can do, you can add like drop shadows. So if I go to drop shadow here, I can do the distance and the spread, but we're not going to look at that. I want to show you stroke. So if you turn on stroke and we go here and we change the color to something like white, we can get a nice white outline on here. And then we can change the size of the stroke interactively and go back to this at any point to change some of this stuff. There's also opacity and you can change the way that it blends just like our layers have blending modes on there. So I might just drop this down slightly. And you can see we've got some information uh, on that layer that is kind of like garbage but it shows up in the stroke so if we go to the eraser tool and hit E we can go in this layer and just erase some of that stuff out. So now we've got a layer that's black and white and it's over the top of everything but I only really want the white information so I can set this to screen and when I do that it basically knocks out anything that's dark and then it takes the lighter information and puts it over the top of whatever is drawing. Now I can shift this underneath the, the ink and you're not going to see much of a difference. I could even put that on uh, the color of the face. I could throw that with inside that group and you can see now that that white line is going to respect the mask that we have and I've thrown it at the bottom so all these colors actually sit over the top of that and that white just draws in the back and we've reordered it so the inks over the top of the color and that everything in the background is down below at least for this stroke part here and then everything in the color is back here. And the last thing I'll do is hit cancel on that. Hit M for my marquee tool and if I wanted to uh, black out the rest of the image and put it in more of a format like this then I can go ahead and say solid color and put that on black and I'd go to my mask, select it, and hit Control i for inverse. And now I'm going to get an idea of what this might look like after I crop the image. I'm going to make it a little bit larger here. And I filled with the wrong color. So I've got a layout like this. Um, so if you wanted to crop it to this, you could hold on Control and select the layer mask. If you hit Control, Control and Shift and I, that inverses your selection. It's the same thing as doing some of the stuff up here, but with hotkeys. And then at that point, we can go Image, Crop, and we would have cropped the entire image to that size. But I was leaving the um, the document actually the same width as what I've got inside of ZBrush. That way, I can kick out. Um, renders outside of ZBrush and not have to worry about um, some of that information uh, not carrying over correctly and being able to just easily snap you know some of my different views and things like that on there. So this is a uh, just a little workflow that I've developed that will help you to be able to send images back and forth from uh, ZBrush and bring that into uh, Photoshop and be able to give this illustration look.